another boring stare at some graph paper video. We were going to do the uh, Vardo only 10 feet long, and then we ended up getting a line on possibly getting a larger frame. So we decided we'll go with 12. I drew this out before we had anything finalized with the trailer. But anyway, the same thing, the bed at the one end, the seats. Uh, we figured being extended, we can put a sink down here, maybe a closet. And then this eventually changed with a little uh, extra thinking. See if I can find that here. I guess you can see in the frame. Let's see what I got going here. This is just uh, to thinking about maybe doing a short drop-down porch. So that's not important right now. But we're going to go with uh, probably this style, just not have the ledge and come up over the wheels because we we're thinking about using a frame that was only five feet wide. And the one we ended up with actually is almost six. When I drew this out, I was I was guessing that the frame was going to be six, but it's not quite. The actual the actual size of the frame would be five, nine and three quarters. So we're losing a little bit, but I can work with that. This isn't so bad. I mean, it'll it'll still uh, have that Vardo shape to it. But what we did, a little thinking, we figured, well, if we have the extra room, maybe we just readjusted a few things in here. Same thing, bed, the two seats, maybe a pull-out table here. The bath, which with the frame size, we may just end up just being like a place to put a composting toilet and may not be enough room in there to get your elbows around to actually use it as a wet bath. That's not a big deal. What we did figure out, or think about doing here, is maybe putting in a central small wood stove. Now, I'm not going to go out and buy one of those, what do they call them, the Cubics or whatever they are. Or anyway, buying one, they're just too expensive, especially when I have the means of building my own. So we're just going to maybe put a small wood stove here. And this fridge, I believe I'll find in the piece of paper what size that is. And this stove... But anyway, let's uh, go back to, let's take a look at this page here. This, my arm's in the way. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to move around in here. This is just some doodles. I think in um, upper cupboards, which would be above the kitchen unit. I'm just going to do some sort of a screen mesh or something inside the doors just for airflow. It's a hard thing to do is get enough airflow inside these small things to keep anything from molding in any cold corners. Anyway, we'd figure this out. You have the stove storage. Well, let me go. This is not the page I'm looking for. Anyway, I guess it would be this one. I said upper cupboards, screened faces on the doors. Thinking the stove to go here. I don't think this stove can be inset, so I think it has to be set on top of something for... I read somewhere and someone was talking about airflow getting to the oven part because it's an open burner. So this may just have a uh, solid top put up here. Anyway, storage down below that for pans. It's a 3.3 cubic foot fridge will fit in here. Because it's like 18.7, like, yeah, 18.7 deep. Which means this could fit under here. The only thing that'd be sticking out would probably be just the door. But everything else will fit. We're thinking about a small wood stove. This funky shape here so far is what I got planned. Put some wood storage underneath here and underneath the seat on the side over here. Just be extra storage for something else. And of course the bed goes to this side. This just takes up the whole side. Anyway, but the stove here, just for anybody that might be curious what I got going there so far. Let's try... I'm so disorganized. I'm not sure if you can see this. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a professional drafter here or anything, but I was goofing around here just doing some mechanical type figuring. It's a lot easier to think if you're staring at something. I was thinking of making a uh, air control that's on. This is just this be threaded so I can adjust it with this knob here to move this in and out and to adjust the airflow and have the air come in from outside. The bad thing about these small trailers is anything that can, anything that burns consumes oxygen. Gonna have the same problem with the stove and everything else, but having the wood stove in there is still gonna pull a lot of oxygen out of the room. So I'm gonna go ahead and have this go outside and pull fresh air from outside and be able to adjust it from here. So I'm not gonna use this design, but this I will still use. 
So I decided to go something more like this. Six by six square tube up here, three by three for this end. And just weld everything up. But see the knob will be here and this will go around. This will all be hollow and this will go out to the through the bottom of the Vardo and pull the air from outside. And I think I've got a, uh, yeah, this is going to be really hard to see sideways. But this is what, yeah, this is basically what it is. It's going to be a, you know, a heavy plate at the top. And then, of course, the door, the door handle. Like I said, doing the same thing. This would give us, you know, pretty fine adjustments for the air. It's not quite airtight or anything because the door's not going to have any kind of ceiling gasket in it. But same thing, be pulling the air through this 3x3 three three from outside. And I'm thinking this should work. Small pieces of wood, a few briquettes or something in there. Anything that just give it a uh, little bit of heat. So that's pretty much it for that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside. It's still kind of early. And I'll show you what I've got done on the trailer so far. The trailer, I should have popped a picture in here somewhere. But it actually... The base of that thing actually is 14.3 long, even though it's, you know, it's registered as bigger. It's actually 7.10 wide now with a three-foot tongue, so, yeah, I need to cut a couple of feet off the frame somewhere. If I cut it off the back, that's going to set the rear axle back further, which is going to increase the tongue weight. Or I can make it a four-foot tongue and and move the body just back. I don't really know what I'm going to do exactly. I'll figure it out as I go. Because right now we're still in the guessing stage. This is going to be the back of it. There's not going to be a whole lot of weight back here. But there will be some. So it may not make any difference. I might just end up taking... Leaving a three foot tongue. Taking two feet off the back of the frame. Cutting it off. Getting some steel. Building a whole new rear bumper. Because this has a round bumper. on Those things are just garbage. You can't really put stabilizers or anything on those so i'm not gonna even mess with it anyway as of now that's it i'm keen to go ahead and use this trailer because there is actually a title for it so that makes a huge difference and i'll do videos of putting the frame together cleaning it up and then i'll try to do a series of videos of as we build it but it's going to be very slow because we've got a lot of stuff to do here since the land rover died we still have, we have something about a vehicle yet and we got all the rest of the uh, bills that pop up just with, you know, life. So we'll do it as we uh, as we get going here. I guess that's it for everything in there. Anywho, I will go out and uh, show you what I'm working at out there. Back in a sec. Now this is it. What a fine looking pile of junk. Anyway... Today, I'm going to go back to work at this thing so I can get some more of this stuff out. Let's take you for a walk around the front. Surprisingly, old WD-40, the coupler still works. And you look at this beautiful side. As I'm pulling it apart, the uh, aluminum is starting to pull off. Yeah. It's got its own camouflage. Yeah, it's pretty rotten. Take a look at the inside through the front here. You can see the whole inside has been rotted out. Just like this. This is the entire front window. I think every single window in this thing leaked. Go on the inside. See the corner of this window leaked really bad. Totally wiped out everything there. Inside here, which used to be a closet, and then also held the heater in here. This wall was totally gone from leaking from up there. Today I think I'll finish pulling this bathroom wall out. That's a nice shape. This counter here, take this out. Get as much of this rotten wood out as I can before the top tries to drop on my head. And then get to the point where I can just push this thing over. These actually still roll. 14 inch tires. 
I might switch these to 15s, I'm not sure. I'm going to replace the rims and tires. If I'm not going to roll with those things. Take a foot or two off the back. Look at that. <laughs> it's been slowly sinking. Starting to drop into the frame. But I may... I need to be about two feet shorter than this. This is actually 15. I only need around 12. Since the Varda is only going to be... 6 by 12 at the base. Then go up to... 8 or whatever it is I decide to go. So I'll chop the frame, put a few more supports in there later. But that's it. That is uh, definitely uh, non restorable 1971 Fleet Craft made here in Seattle. Didn't make it, it's been sitting for 20 years. I checked the plate and it was last licensed in 98. So yeah, it's been off the road for a while and sitting. Can't see the top, the whole top of this thing's covered in tree branches. Just sitting under a tree, rotting away. But I'll turn it into something else. I hope. <laughs> Alright, that's probably enough for this video, so I'll put up something once I get this either just about tore down or once I finally get it down into the frame. Alright, later guys.